All right, we're going to take a look at how um, we do a couple things. A is use the Kinetis header files um, to talk to peripherals. And then uh, specifically, we're just going to have an example. The example peripheral will be some general purpose I.O. Um, so we, before we go into the Kinetis header files, um, I discussed in the previous video, if you go in derivative.h, um, that points to this MKL24Z4, I'm sorry, 25Z4 header file, and that has all these um, register definitions. Um, before we do that, let's look at our application. So I have the Freedom Board, and there's an LED on the Freedom Board. It's a tricolor LED, uh, red, green, blue. Uh, we can see it here. It's wired as common anode, meaning that's a turn... Uh, an LED on, uh, you have to s clear a bit, and because if this is a low, say it's ground, current will flow uh, from the power supply through the diode, you know, to ground. Uh, to turn it off, you turn it high. Um, so all we have to do is be able to set and clear some bits. So it, we can see here uh, there are a bunch of ports on the uh, Kinetis. Uh, usually they have port A, B, C, D, GPIO, A, B, C, D, E. Um, so bit 18 um, is the, the red, bit 19 of port B is the green, and the blue, this is a little confusing, this is actually an off-page connector. Um, I didn't like how they had that, the schematic went to D13, which is actually port D1. Um, so you can see here that there's pin 74 of the chip, goes to port D1, but there's also other stuff that can go there. It, it turns out every pin has a, a register um, that, or has a MUX, a multiplexer associated with it, that you can kind of control what goes to the pin. So different peripherals are wired to these pins. And, and the reason that's done is so uh, you can kind of get all the peripherals out. If we had to have a pin for every peripheral and all the functions, it would be 5 million pins. Um, so they multiplex pin assignments, and they usually spread it across so you can kind of get a good combination of, of anything. Um, so we're, we're going to see in a minute how we enable um, how we enable a particular peripheral to a pin. All right, so the first thing, though, is we have to be able to kind of talk to these registers. Now, what I'm about to show you kind of works uh, for any peripheral. Uh, in the same kind of flow, you're going to have to do with any peripheral. The Kinetis was kind of designed for low power. And to get, you know, to reduce power consumption in a microprocessor is that you either reduce or turn off the clock. It's a, it's a fully synchronous device, um, or mostly synchronous. There may be some asynchronous uh, elements in there. Is you got to turn off or reduce clock. So most of the peripherals have the ability to, to uh, you know, gate the clock out. Now, I happen to know, because uh, I've read the reference manual, that inside of this, uh, you know, KL25 device, there is something called the System Integration Module. And, and what it does, it's kind of like a catch-all module uh, to configure the chip. And so one of the big things you use use it for is for you know, setting up, or I should say, gating clocks. So, there are some registers called the system clock gating uh, and control registers. And what they do is, they're just bits that you set or clear to enable or disable, you know, uh, a clock to a peripheral. Now, there are, there is several clocks in this device. We're going to talk about the clock distribution uh, in a future video. For now, let's just assume there's clock clocking going around to the peripherals, and we can turn it on or turn it off. Well, system clock gating control 5 um, has the ports. So there's port B, it's bit 10, um, and port D is uh, bit 12. So we set those bits to enable the, um, the ports, and you notice that by default the ports are all disabled after reset. Um, now, it says here that this register is located at this absolute address. Um, we could actually use that, write a, you, you know, use a pointer in C to kind of get to it, but we don't have to. Um, there is this nice uh, symbol here called SIM SCGC5. Well, that's what the header file is kind of used for the, uh, in the derivative.h, is that someone went through and defined all these symbols. Now, 
Uh, let's take a quick peek and um, oop, let me grab the right. Let me copy this. Now you can go through the header file yourself. Um, if you're not used to C, it may look a little weird. Uh, let's go whole word. In that, um, notice I'm in the file, that there's there's a lot of uh, pointers to pointers to pointers with, with these defines and the way they, they map things out. So there's a symbol for sim scgc5. But notice it just calls another macro. Well, if you dig down deep enough, um, uh, what it does, it uses pointers to data structures um, to kind of uh, map these peripherals. So you can drill, you know, kind of drill down, you know, it, you know, if you want. And let me go up. Here's all these masks. Um, so in memory, this is actually how the sim uh, peripherals laid out. You know, there's an option register config. You know, these empty locations. So what the what the macros do is map you know different peripherals to this structure uh, at the end of the day though um, all you need to know is that all this stuff's here for you so and in most cases what you see here there's a symbol defined um, so if we go in main.c for me to get to the symbol I just type it in now what's even cooler is if you just start typing in the symbol uh, hit control enter brings up the uh, code completion um, and as you type it kind of shows you what you can do now I'm going because I want to set bits I need the or well it turns out that all the bits um, they define nice bit masks so let's look at this let's go on the header file and let's go find right there it is so port B mask it's uh, 400 hex. Well, does that make sense? Yeah, port B is bit 10 sets. So that would be a 400. You know, zero. Uh, so generally, if you type the register name uh, and then the name of the bit underscore mask, you know, there's always a bit mask. So you can hunt around and find these things um, or use a code completion. There's also a shift symbol that tells you like where the, the bit's at if, if you want to use that. So in this case, for me to set the bits, I need to OR the register with itself so I don't muck with what's already in there. And I just OR the masks together because remember, ORing things together, if there's bits set, they'll, the result, everything will be set. Um, so yeah, that's 1, 0, 0, and that is 4, 0, 0. Um, uh, so that'll set those bits. So at this point, the, the port, the actual port, uh, the logic at the port is... Um, the clock's enabled. So we can't actually muck with the registers, play around with the register of the clock enable, or else the chip will freak out um, and we'll get an, uh, you know, uh, an exception. Um, so the next thing we have to do is configure this multiplexer. I mentioned that you know, there's multiple peripherals going to each pin. So we got to select the GPIO peripheral. Well, the way we do that is if we go to the reference manual and there is a uh, Chapter 10 is signal multiplexing and signal description. It kind of gives you the pinouts and all this. Um, it kind of describes all this clock gating and whatnot. Um, you know, it's a good chapter to read through this. But there's a table that kind of tells you for every pin of the chip, uh, what is that pin and, you know, what are the possible things that we can, uh, you know, multiplex on that pin. So port B18 is one of the LEDs. It's pin 53. Well, the default configuration is here. It tells you what by default it's a touch sense input for this port, uh, channel 11, and then the alternates. So there's eight alternates. That's a three-bit uh, multiplexer. Um, in port B18, the GPIO is Alt 1. Well, it turns out the the GPIO is always Alt 1. But let's say you wanted timer um, two channel zero. That's Alt 3. So let's keep that in mind. This is where you come to see like you know how to choose things in the multiplexer. So if we now, to configure this port, there's chapter 11 is the port control and interrupts. Uh, one thing I like about the Kinetis is that every single pin um, and every port has its own control register. There's a bunch of them, like I said, one for every pin. 
and uh, as I scroll down through here, the the easy part is though, the register has the same layout no matter what it is. Notice how it says port X, so you put in port, then the 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 name like B, then PCR, then the you know the number. Uh, this would be the the port number. So say port B PCR 18. There would be a nice header um, file, you know, nice macro for it. Now you can kind of read down through how it works. There's lots of things you can do with a port. You can actually configure it as an input for like an interrupt. You can have an interrupt, which is kind of cool, DMA transfers. But the thing we're concerned about is the multiplexer. Um, this is where you set up the MUX. So we can see where you select our alternatives, our alts um, from that table, with GPIO being uh, number one. Um, now the other thing I'm going to point out here is there's this drive strength enable. So if you're driving things like a transistor or a you know LED, you probably want to have this enabled. Um, and we see here that it's more than one bit. It's three bits for the MUX. Um, the drive strength is uh, uh, you know one bit. Well, once again, they you know the header file helps us with the um, let's go to open declaration. It has a macro for multiple bits. So if I go into PCR MUX with macros that have arguments, there's this X, so whatever I put here for X goes in, it's replaced in here. Well, all this macro does is takes the number you put in here and shifts it up by this symbol called for PCR MUX shift. Well, what's that? Well, that's 8. That means because it starts at bit 8. So we shift it up by 8 bits. And then we or it with this mask. Well, this mask just has those three bits set. So what that is a nice guard in case someone types in a goofy value like 17, you can't set bits outside of bits like uh, 8, 9, and 10. Um, so if we look in here, yeah, that makes sense. 8, 9, and 10. Uh, that's why we take the value, shift it up by 8 to get these bits. And then we want to mask off everything outside of that. Um, and that's all this line is. There's some casting operations to ensure that the result is a 32-bit number. Um, the way we use it, though, is you type in PCR port underscore PCR underscore MUX. The, the number we want, it's a 3-bit number, so we can enter in between 0 and 7. And this generates the mask, all right? But masks are nice in that we can OR them with other masks, so I'm going to OR it with this drive strength enable. That's also defined in the header file. So notice there's no port B in front of it. The reason they do that, especially also here, is that because there can be any port, port A, B, C, or D. So it's just as easy as stepping and repeating. I have port B 18, PCR 19, port D, PCR 1 um, for the blue LED. So once we do this, what that means is the GPIO functionality is now routed to the, um, the pins of the chip. The last thing we have to do is configure the GPIO. Uh, general purpose input output means we can have inputs or outputs. So let's open up uh, the GPIO chapter, which is chapter 41. And this is what we use to you know, set and clear bits as well as read them. So you can look down through here. Um, there is a data output register. This works like other microprocessors. Whatever bits you set in this register here, goes to the pin of the chip, you know, wherever it's mapped to. Now one thing, um, there's an input register to read read bits. The first thing we need to set, is, though, is what's called the data direction register. This is how we configure a pin to be an output or an input. We put a 1 in if we want a particular to be an output. So if I go back to uh, here, you notice I found this macro for the data direction register. And I just or it with some locations. I just define nice symbols for the locations of the bit. Remember, it was 18 and 19 on port B were the uh, red and the green. And this is a cute way of doing masks as well. You can just say one shifted to the left by 18 bits. It'll figure out, the preprocessor will figure out what that is in terms of hex. Um, the reason I like this is that it doesn't use any extra CPU cycles because this is evaluated at compile time. The compiler sees that one shifted by 18 is a constant, so it just figures out what it is and it's easy to read. Uh, it's bit 18. So I define these nice symbols so I, so I know what they are. And I just set the bits in the respective data direction registers, two for port B, one for port D, because that's how the guy did the layout set them up. 
and now we're ready to go. So at this point, uh, we can read and write bits. How do you do that? Well, you can use the um, data output register, but the Kinetis has another neat feature, is that the, the designers knew that if you're manipulating GPIO, you want a fast way to do it. So to make this work is uh, to, to kind of accelerate the function, they put the, the oring and not anding features uh, you know, in hardware. So they have this thing called a port set output register. What that means is if you write a value to this register, what other bits are a 1 will get set, but anything that's 0, it'll leave alone. It won't write a 0, it'll leave it to its previous state. So it kind of gets rid of the OR operation. There's also a clear. Uh, it does the same thing. If you write a 1, it will clear the bit. If you write a 0, it leaves it alone. The toggle just does that. If you write a 1, it toggles it. It flips it from its current state. Notice well, there's an input register. If we configure for input, we read it. That can be another uh, lecture. So here's how I here's how I use it. Is that uh, instead of using an OR here, I just write the bit that I want. Port set register equals LED. Because that one bit is only set, it's the only thing that gets modified. When I set use the set register for the green, the red's still on, it'll stay on because it, the hardware does the ORing for me. Now this is particular only to these GPIO. Not all the registers in Kinetis do this, just the ones for GPIO. Um, so keep that in mind. So in this code I set um, red, green, blue, then I clear red, green, and, green, and blue. Now remember, setting actually turns off the LED. So this turns off red, green, blue, and then it turns on red, green, and blue and just kind of loops. Because remember, it's inverted because they use common anode. You see that in the schematic. Um, now to prove to you this works, um, let me go download. Uh, sure. Yes, I want to always terminate because I already had this running. So it's going to launch my application. It's downloading. So let me run this. So I have my little webcam viewer. So there we go. That's kind of cool. Um, this kind of cycles through colors. So you can play with that, um, you know, yourself and uh, play with the different colors. So it does work. Now, one last note uh, before I leave here is that this process is the same for just about any peripheral. The first thing you want to do is you have to enable the clock. Because um, if you try to write to a peripheral, the clock isn't enabled, um, bad things will happen. Uh, once you do that, you configure the, the port I.O. to make sure that peripheral is routed. Um, then after that, you configure the peripheral. Um, so one note you might want to ask is, well, if the port's a peripheral, you know, like something you enable clock. Why not the GPIO? Why not that module? Well, because I read the the manual. It says GPIO is clocked by the system clock, and you actually can't disable it. It's always on. That's why I didn't have to enable it. Um, lastly, if you're going to be bit banging, setting, clearing bits, well, this certainly works. It's usually a better idea to instead of directly doing this, do something like this. Say define really red LED off, and we can do one for LED on like that and use the clear register. That way we can do something like this alright it's easy to read and that way if you ever flopped IO around if you're trying to make this portable um, you know it's easy to do. Alright so that concludes this tutorial um, the, the, the code should be on the Freescale Communities page, um, or you should have enough now that you could just do it yourself. Um, the only thing I'll mention about this code, I had to put in a corny little delay loop. Um, you know, it's just a simple for loop to kind of slow things down. And some of the future videos, I'm going to show you how to enable the SysTick timer so we can do some basic timing um, in hardware, not, you know, just a, with a corny delay loop. So, um, all right, happy coding.